Ja, guten Abend. Hallo YouTube. It's time for Cinema 4D tutorial on composite images. Oh, forget this stupid accent. It's Roger Quinn here. Just a short tutorial showing you how to make a composite image a bit like this. This one. Here's a fake car. It's a 3D low poly thing. Uh, one of the samples in Cinema 4D release 13. Uh, projected against a photographic background. Okay, uh, so we're going to look at how you create that. Pretty straightforward. It basically makes use of the magical composite tag. The composite tag. Let's check it out. Rightio, we shall start with the creation of a new texture. I'm just making this a very, very simple texture. And I'm loading in an image, what I prepared earlier, well, I didn't prepare it. In fact, I ruthlessly took this from the interweb <coughs> and it's in fact a Creative Commons image, so I'm free to use it. And there we go. So I've done nothing else to that other than to place uh, a simple image onto a texture. No other settings have been used. And then basically the next significant step in this process is to make use of a background object. Now, of, as you'll see there, nothing actually appears. A background object is just designed simply to do this. I'll drag my texture to it, and lo and behold, it provides a background graphic. And you can also see that our uh, construction grid is uh, not exactly looking like it's adhering to the image perspective. So that's what we've got to do now. So a couple little tricks you can use. Um, essentially, it's really to do this by eye, but if you pay attention to the construction grid, you will see there's a dotted gray line just above the very end of the construction grid. That's actually your horizon line. So the trick with this is to have a look at your photograph and then try and work out where the horizon is appearing on your actual photograph. Now, fortunately for this demonstration, uh, we can actually see that the dead middle of that perspective, anyway, not the middle of the image, the middle of perspective, follows along the line of those window ledges around about there. So I'm using that dotted line in my construction grid to basically compare it to that. And I'm just using the rotation of the default camera to get me into that position. So a combination of that plus moving the grid just simply laterally up and down allows me to see whether that grid is roughly in the right position for the perspective of our scene there. Now, the other thing I'm just keeping an eye on here is down in the left-hand corner of this image, cheerfully, there's a little uh, gutter in the photo and I can see, compare my grid with the lines on that gutter just to see if that's looking roughly right. So I'm just gonna move that laterally now, uh, left to right, and just make sure I'm not moving that off my center horizon line, which is that's roughly looking right. And that to me looks pretty darn good. Okay, moving right along, I'm now just going to throw a default plane into the scene and we can't actually see that at this point because that's disappeared out of our angle of view. So what I just need to do now is kind of just jump to some of those other views, move it around as you can see there, it's just starting to appear in our camera view. Okay, and now I can grab it and jump back to my camera view and I'm just going to extend that. So this is a simple plane object. I'm not putting any coordinates on this because all I will be using this for eventually is a shadow catcher. So it's not actually going to render as an object. It will render simply as a surface on which to put some objects. And there it is. I'll just quickly render that to show you what we've got. Nothing much, frankly. It's a black looking thing on a photograph. Not very impressive, but we shall move along because this is going to start to work soon. Next thing I'm actually going to throw in there is the object that we really want to see blending with our <coughs> image. And for that, as I said, I just use this um, little low poly car that um, comes with the uh, program simply just for um, purpose of demonstration. Obviously, this whole thing would look a darn sight better with a higher res image, a higher res model, actually, but you'll get the concept anyway. And it kind of looks cool to have a little car being a road and all in the background. Okay, so all I'm just doing now is rotating the vehicle around, model the vehicle around, <clears throat> into approximately the right perspective. 
Now, the other thing we can see almost immediately from that is, I'm just positioning that, just checking the wheels aren't going through my plane there. It's looking a little bit too small compared to the perspective of the rest of the scene there. So I could quickly adjust that just by modifying the scale. I might try a scale of two. It's looking a bit better. So I've just simply scaled up that model using no particular tricks there. I'm just going to move that a little bit further forward. What I'm using here is simply my eye to detect the scale of the vehicle in the background and see if that roughly looks correct to the image on the, the vehicle I'm working with. Okay, so once again, just keep an update. We shall render that, see what we've got. There's a vehicle sitting in the scene, but still not looking terribly realistic. So this is where some of the interesting part starts. First thing I'm going to do now to get this to look a bit better is to make sure that our plane is has got the same texture as the background. Now that's very easy to do to start with. I just drag the texture and place it onto the plane. And you can see it's done that much like there's a flat you know, sort of photograph sitting on the road. Not terribly realistic. However, if you select that texture and then you change the default UVW mapping to frontal. Now, frontal projection is effectively going to show you what the, as if the camera is um, projecting the, the graphic onto the scene that you see, which means, of course, you're going to see a flat version of that. In the editor, that's starting to look okay. Um, we've got a bit of a darkened area there because there's actually an object uh, that that's sitting on, and I render that, and I'm hoping that I'll actually see the right effect. But sadly, I don't. Now, this is because either, I think a slight malfunction bug, maybe, I would call it, Maxon, if you're listening. Uh, the default light uh, that starts off in these scenes uh, seems to ignore a, a, a texture. Uh, there may be some tricky way to fix that, but uh, frankly, the way that I know to fix that is to place a custom light into the scene, which we need to do anyway. So I'm going to do that now. I could, of course, use a regular light, like a light bulb, but let's think about this. The background photograph is being lit by the sun. So let's use something that's representing a similar light. I could, of course, use Cinema 4D's sunlight. I find that's got some rather complex settings on it that I don't really need to fuss with on something quick like this. I find that infinite light is a really quick way to do this because it's fairly easy to follow. Okay, I'm just going to go on once again, make sure that the infinite light is in my camera view so that I can see it. In actual fact, this is not super critical because an infinite light can technically be placed anywhere. I want to do this though so it makes logical sense to me. So I'm going to position it somewhere like that. <clears throat> Frankly, the height is not critical, but I just want to be able to see it in my scene and then I'm going to simply rotate the infinite light and that little yellow orange dot is indicating the direction. So I'm now trying to simulate the same direction of light that the photograph is using. Now I can tell from the building in the background that the light is coming from the left of the image and my shadows are on the right hand side so I'm going to set up my light to do something similar. And a closer view at the shadows on the ground of the vehicles and things shows that there's probably a very very slight forward rotation too of the light. Maybe something a bit like that. Anyway, you can have an experiment around with um, a similar image. Uh, it's worth spending some time to get that light direction right because it tends to look more believable. Anyway, let's have a quick look at that and see what we're getting. I'll render that again. Now that's looking a bit better. We're now seeing the correct texture being projected onto the plane. We can, however, see a fairly telltale line that's um, showing where that plane is. It's not seamlessly mixed, mixing with our background. The other thing we don't have is shadows. So let's fix those two things now. I'll select my light, and of course default lights don't have shadows turned on, so I'm simply just going to activate that. And I'm leaving all this on default. Folks, uh, I'm not going to mess around with any sort of subtle settings of shadows. You could, of course, do that to make this look a little more believable. But let's just see what the default settings are getting. Okay, that's looking a bit better now. There's our shadows. We can do a quick assessment to see whether those shadows are looking roughly right. I think they are. I think they are. So the next thing I want to do is fix this sort of edge line. And this is where the first of our composition tags comes into the scene. I'm going to select my plane because that's my problematic object at the moment. Right click and go and choose uh, Cinema 4D Tags Compositing. And this adds this little sort of clapperboard looking thing to the side of my plane. <coughs> Pardon me. And I've selected that and I'm simply going in there and I can look at all these options that are available down the bottom there. 
frankly, I'm going to leave all them on once again. I could turn a few off because they're not critical, but I'm not going to mess around with complicating things. I'm just going to focus on the thing we need, which is compositing background. Okay, compositing background. If you select that and turn it on, render again. Voila, as the French person say. Um, you won't see that little connecting line anymore. You see a seamless integration of background and foreground image. So that's good. It's looking not too bad, okay? But we still can improve this a little further. I mean, it's not, it's not too bad, in fact, and that's probably quite useful for 90% of things, but um, let's look at going a step further. If we're trying to fake reality here, we need to set up what the realistic lighting is doing in a photograph like that. And in the real world, in a scene like that, Yes, of course. We've worked out roughly what sunlight's doing. <clears throat> we need to remember though this reflected skylight. So a couple of things we could do. We could set up a second light um, and colour it roughly the sky colour, or you could use an area light or something like that to simulate that effect. It would work all right. There's actually a really cool way of doing this though that does a very good simulation if you're after very realistic effects. And that's to make use of the global illumination uh, tools within uh, or algorithms within Cinema 4D and it also makes use of another object which is the sky object okay now the sky object I'll just bung that in now um, it looks like it kills our scene now what a sky object is is a massive sphere uh, and which our scene is within the center of that <coughs> it's designed for you to put I guess sky like textures on the inside of that to give a simulation of a uh, a full environment okay so it's basically designed to give a, a, an ongoing um, seemingly infinite space out, off into the background but it's basically just a great big sphere so we will continue this process and make a texture for that and once again I'm doing a very simple texture to place under that which will simply just be I'm going to use a gradient for this there we go and change it to vertical and if I'd been even smarter, I would have sampled the colors in the picture. Uh, but I'll just use, actually, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow in here, but lighten it up a lot for the horizon color. And then the second color of my gradient, I'm going to just chuck in a blue, sky blue. As I said, I could have been, I'm just going to lighten that a touch. There we go. Now, effectively, all I'm trying to do here is simulate what that sky color was doing. So that'll do and drag that onto my sky and it looks that and I could render that and we'll see what's going on here and we're getting a really nice simulation of the sky blue but of course we've now lost all of our background photo other than what was projected on the plane so we need to fix that and the way you fix that is once again a compositing tag I'm going to select my sky right click Cinema 4D tags compositing and Kind of similar to what we did before, I'm going to go down into all these settings at the bottom. And last time we used compositing background. It's not quite what we want to do this time. What we want to do is we want to make use of the colors that the sky object are reflecting. We're going to use that in the global illumination. So we actually don't need the camera to see the sky object. So I'm going to go to where it says scene by camera. I'm going to deactivate that. Okay. So that was the difference this time. This is not a compositing background. This is simply just telling the composite tag on the sky to tell it to be invisible to the camera. Because we don't actually need the camera to see the sky. We need global illumination to see the sky. And we do that uh, in the global illumination settings. So I'll do that now. So just to confirm, I'll render that as it is. GI hasn't been turned on. There's just our standard scene back again. All looking okay and now we'll get the influence of the blue sky reflecting in the scene by going to our render settings and go to effect uh, activate global illumination and then instead of leaving it on the default of IR for a still image render go down to the very bottom of that and choose sky sampler okay and of course that's designed to look for a sky object and for global illumination then to effectively render the lighting that it's picking up from the sky object which in our case will be our gradient of very light yellow to blue <clears throat> and just to assess that that is indeed working I will turn off my light okay the infinite light I put in the scene render this and just see what the effect of the GI is
and it does that, which looks pretty weird, but have a think about this. If you turned off the sun, and if you could do that in the real world, and you were just getting the influence of the reflected skylight, you'd pretty much see that because sky's blue, and you'd be getting blue light and a very subtle shadow underneath the vehicle. So now to complete the illusion, turn the light back on, okay, the main um, light in the scene, re-render it, and now we'll get the effect of both the global illumination blue and the colour of the actual, or well, the influence of the light in the scene. And there it is. And yes, our car looks pretty fake because it's a low poly one, but the lighting effects are pretty darn good. The shadow now, yeah, our ugly could be a little bit darker, so I could probably turn down the GI settings, but we are now getting that combination of the car's shadow being influenced by the reflected blue skylight, which of course happens in the real world. So there you go. There's a quick, fairly whirlwind example of how to create that. You saw there there was lots of little subtle uh, settings that you can tweak, the intensity of the light, the intensity of the shadows, the colours of the lights. Um, I haven't compensated for the colour of the sun here. I probably should have done. It's just white light at the moment. Um, lots of those things you can fiddle with and, of course, none the least being a higher quality model. But basically, in essence, that's how you do simple compositing with a still image in Cinema 4D. Bye now.